Welcome to the Satellite Data Training Series presented by the Aerosol Team at the NOAA NESDIS Center for Satellite Applications and Research. Today I'm going to provide an overview of NOAA's GOES-R Satellite Series. GOES stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellites and the Advanced Baseline Imager or ABI sensor. Before viewing this video, we recommend watching the video called Introduction to Satellite Remote Sensing, which is also available on the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel. The GOES-R series are NOAA's revolutionary new geostationary weather satellites. They are a huge leap forward in technology compared to the previous generation of GOES satellites, which are called the legacy GOES. You can think of it as like going from black and white television with the legacy GOES to high definition TV with the GOES-R series. The GOES-R satellites provide advanced observations and imagery of Earth's weather, oceans, and environment. Currently, there are two GOES-R series satellites in orbit. GOES-16 is also called GOES-East because it is centered at 75.2 degrees west longitude and provides coverage of Central and Eastern North America, Central America, South America, and the North Atlantic Hurricane Basin. GOES-16, which was known as GOES-R before launch, was launched in November 2016 and became operational as GOES East in December 2017. GOES 17 is called GOES West because it is centered at 137.2 degrees west longitude and provides coverage of Western North America, Hawaii, Alaska, and the North and South Pacific hurricane basins. GOES 17, which was known as GOES S before launch, was launched in March 2018 and became operational as GOES West in February 2019. The Advanced Baseline Imager, or ABI, is the primary sensor on the GOES-R series satellites for imaging the Earth's weather, oceans, and environment. It is NOAA's next generation imager, and it is a huge leap forward in technology on geostationary satellites. Compared to the imager on the legacy GOES satellites, the ABI has three times more spectral resolution, four times more spatial resolution, and five times faster temporal resolution. That means the ABI provides more observations more frequently, as well as more types of observations and higher quality observations. The ABI has 16 spectral bands compared to only five on the legacy GOES imager. And they include two visible bands, four near infrared bands, and 10 infrared bands. Details about the ABI spectral bands are listed in the table. As you can see, most of the bands have two kilometer spatial resolution, but if you have one kilometer resolution and the red band, band two, has 500 meters resolution. One of the benefits of the ABI is that it has frequent routine views of three different sectors, the full hemisphere, the conus, and two small mesoscale sectors that are adjustable based on current hazards. For example, the mesoscale sectors can be focused on the Midwestern US to monitor supercell thunderstorm development, or on the Caribbean Sea to track a tropical cyclone, or on coastal New England to observe a wintertime nor'easter bomb cyclone. All right, let's take a look at those ABI views called scan sectors. First, the scan sectors for GOES East. As you can see from the graphics, the full disk hemispheric view captures Central and Eastern North America, Central America, South America, and much of the Atlantic Ocean. The CONUS view captures the entire CONUS, plus Mexico and part of Central America, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. As I mentioned, the mesoscale sectors are movable based on current hazards. But the default goes east mesoscale views are shown here to give you an idea of their scale. Next, we look at the scan sectors for goes west. The full disk hemispheric view captures Western North America, Hawaii, Alaska, and most of the Pacific Ocean. The CONUS view captures the Western CONUS, Hawaii, and part of the Northern Pacific Ocean. As with GOES East, the GOES West mesoscale sectors are movable based on current hazards. The default GOES West mesoscale views are shown here to give you an idea of their scale. This table lists the dimensions of the ABI scan sectors. 
you can see that the conus views are 5,000 kilometers in the east-west direction and 3,000 kilometers in the north-south direction, while the mesoscale views are 1,000 by 1,000 kilometers. The ABI has a number of different scan modes. The routine scan mode for both goes east and goes west changed on April 2, 2019. The default scan mode up until that time was called mode 3, and it provided one complete full disk observation every 15 minutes, one full conus observation every five minutes, and two mesoscale observations every minute. That is one complete mesoscale observation every 30 seconds. The current default scan mode is mode six, which is the same as mode three for the conus and mesoscale scans, but the difference is that it provides the full disk observation every 10 minutes instead of every 15 minutes. Here is an example of how the scan modes work. This graphic shows the approximate timeline for the goes east mode 6 scan pattern, which is called mode 6A. The pink lines correspond to full disk scans, the lighter blue lines to CONUS scans, and the green lines to the mesoscale scans. You may have heard that the ABI on goes west, GO17, has a problem that affects its performance. This problem was discovered during testing of the ABI after goes 17s launch. Part of the ABI's cooling system, called the loop heat pipe, is not operating at full capacity. That means there is insufficient cooling of about half of the ABI spectral bands, bands 8 through 16. This insufficient cooling becomes a problem only during parts of the night at certain times of the year. When the sun heats up the detectors on the ABI's long wave infrared focal plane module faster than the loop heat pipe can cool them, then IR bands 8 through 16 become saturated, meaning they don't provide a useful signal. The good news is that the visible bands, bands 1 and 2, and IR bands 3 through 7 are not affected by the loop heat pipe problem. And during ABI's so-called cold seasons around the summer solstice and winter solstice, bands 8 through 16 are fine. However, it's during the ABI's warm seasons, before and after the vernal and autumnal equinoxes, that bands 8 through 16 are degraded, and images have reduced quality or are unusable about two to six hours per night. For much more information on the GOES West loop heat pipe anomaly, visit the website shown here. It's important to note that some ABI Level 2 products, the ones that use bands 8 through 16, are more affected than others. Check the latest guidance from the ABI science teams to know when to use and when not to use, the specific products. This table lists the estimated hours each day the 16 ABI bands will have unsaturated signal during the so-called cold and warm seasons. The figures show examples of how the loop heat pipe anomaly affects ABI images. The top figure is partially affected imagery. It has some degradation, the yellow lines, but it's still usable qualitatively. The bottom figure is completely saturated imagery. It is not usable at all. Now that you know more about the GOES-R satellites and the ABI, you may wish to explore additional titles in the STAR Aerosol Team's satellite data training series, such as a detailed overview of ABI aerosol products, including aerosol optical depth and aerosol detection, a video showing how to download ABI level two data files from NOAA's comprehensive large array data stewardship system or class, and a video tutorial on how to navigate NOAA's Aerosol Watch website, where you can find prepared imagery relevant to aerosols and fires from the ABI on GOES East and GOES West. Look for these videos on the Aerosol Watch YouTube channel.